Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing great. Today we are going to talk about AMBA APB protocol. But before diving into that, let's first understand what a protocol is. A protocol is like a set of manners or rules that people follow during a conversation. Think of it like a common language that both people must understand. In electronics, this common language is also called a protocol and it allows two component to communicate and exchange data smoothly without any confusion. So in this session, we will discuss about a protocol that is APB protocol. Coming to AMBA, what AMBA is? AMBA stands for Advanced Microcontroller Bus Architecture. It is basically a set of protocols developed by ARM to standardize the communication of various components inside a SOC. AMBA includes various protocols like AHP, APB, AXI, AXI Lite, ASB, CHI, ACE. As you can clearly see in this diagram, this is the basic architecture of AMBA. It consists of an AHB used for high performance tasks and an APB used for low speed peripherals. These two buses are connected through a bridge that is AHB to APB bridge which allow communication between high speed components and low speed components. This simple and modular design make AMBA efficient and scalable for SOC integration. Now let's move on the main agenda of this session, the APB protocol. APB stands for Advanced Peripheral Bus. It is a simple low power and synchronous protocol designed for connecting low speed peripherals. Unlike pipeline protocol, APB is non-pipeline. By non-pipeline, I mean that a new transfer cannot begin until the current one is fully completed. Each transfer takes at least two cycles to complete. APB supports multiple slaves, but there is only one master. The APB bridge acts as a master and it initiates the request, so it is known as requester and the peripherals that respond to the to those requests are known as completers. So in this way, the APB basically works. Now coming to the operating states of APB protocol. The APB protocol operates in three main states. The first one is idle state. In idle state, all the signals are at their default values and no transfer is happening. The next one is setup state. In setup state, the pre-select signal is asserted, indicating the start of transfer. It lasts for only one clock cycle, after which the access states come. In access state, the p-enable signal is already is asserted, and when both p-enable and p-ready are high, the actual data transfer will happen. The p-ready signal is provided by the peripheral. It indicates the peripheral is ready to complete the transfer. P ready control the exit from the access state. If P ready is high, the transfer is completed. If P ready is low, the bus remain in the access state until P ready becomes high. After the access state, if there is no further transfer, the bus return to the idle state. If another transfer is pending and P ready is already high, the bus goes back to the setup state for next transfer. To understand how APB protocol works, it's important to get familiar with its key signals. These signals are used for communication between APB bridge and peripherals. Let's look at them one by one. The first signal is peak clock signal. It generates from the clock. All signals are timed against the rising edge of the clock. The next one is P reset signal. It generates from the system bus reset. It is an active low reset signal. And in all the signals of APB, the P letter is there. It indicates peripherals. The next signal is P address signal. It generates from the requester. It is an address signal. It could be of 32 bit width. And the next signal is P protection signal. It also generates from the requester. It is a protection type signal. It is 3 bits wide. P protection indicates whether the signal is normal or privileged, secured or protected, and whether the transaction is data access or instruction access. The next signal is P select signal. It also generates from the requester. It is a select signal. The P 
select signal indicates whether the completer is selected or not the requester generate p select signal for each completer we have already seen p protection p select signal but let's discuss them again p protection signal p protection signal is of three bits the first bit indicates whether the signal is secured or non secured the second bit indicate whether the signal is user mode or privileged mode and the last bit indicates whether the signal is data access or instruction access so in this example you can see when my p protection signal is 000 it means it is data access user mode and secured signal when my p protection signal is 111 it means it is instruction access privileged and non secure signal coming to p select signal p select signal is a master to slave signal stands for peripheral select signal it is used to select a peripheral during transfer in a system when there are multiple peripherals each peripheral gets its own p select signal where x indicate number of peripheral so if p select 1 is 1 it means p select signal of first peripheral is 1 then peripheral 1 is accessed then all other peripheral will not get access and its p and their p select signal are zero coming to next signal that is p enable signal it is an enable signal it generates from the requester p enable indicates the second cycle of the apb transfer next signal is p write signal it is a direction signal it also generates from the requester p write indicates whether it is a write operation or there is a read operation when p write is high it means there is write access and when p write is low it means there is read access next signal is p write data it is a write data signal when p write signal is high p write data bus is driven by the apb bridge requester during write cycles p write data can be of 8 bit can be of 16 bit and can be of 32 bit just think about why it is p write not anything like p read just think for once stop signal is a stop signal also generates from the requester it get active during write transfer only not during read transfer p stop indicate which byte lane to update during a write transfer it tells the slave which bytes of the write data are valid during write transfer p stop signal width depend upon write data width for every 8 bits of write data there is one bit of p stop signal so if data is of 64 bits then p stop is of 8 bits similarly if data is of 32 bits then p stop is of 4 bits so in this example you can see if p stop signal is 111 p stop signal is of 4 bit it means data signal is of 4 bytes and all 4 bytes are valid during write transfer if p stop is 1100 it means p stop is of 4 bits and p write data signal is of 4 bytes and only 2 bytes are valid during write transfer ready signal it generates from the completer when p ready is high it means our peripheral is ready for the transfer the next signal is p read data signal when our write when our p write signal is low the read transfer is happening then p read data signal is driven by the selected completer during read cycle next is p slave error signal it generates from the completer it indicates that there is an error in our in our transfer suppose if we were trying to write 6 in our memory then it was not writing 6 either it was writing any other value like 4 or any garbage value similarly for read for read operation if we are trying to read from some specific address 
then it was not reading from that address when our p slave array signal is high so far we have discussed most of the important signals used in the apb protocol now it's time to dive into how actual data transfers happen in apb the amba apb protocol uses a simple two phase transfer mechanism that is optimized for low power and low complexity peripherals all operations are fully synchronized and involve minimum control signals there are three types of tra transfers happen in apb the first one is write transfer data is written from master to the peripheral the second one is read transfer data is read from the peripheral to the master and the third one is idle transfer no activity occur the bus remains in its default state coming to transfer phases idly all signals are at their default values this is idle state the next phase is set of phase when p select signal is asserted our peripheral got selected and the other signals like p write data p write and p address all should be valid and asserted during this phase only the next phase is unable phase in unable phase p unable signal is asserted for write transfer data is written to the slave and for read transfer data is driven by the slave transfer completes when p ready signal got high coming to write transfer write transfer with no wait state so in this picture you can see from t0 to t1 no signal is asserted no transfer is happening so this is idle state from t1 to t2 it is in set of phase p select is 1 it means peripheral is selected p write is 1 it is write operation and p address is equals to 1 it means address 1 is the address where data needs to be written p write data is equals to data 1 so it is the data to be written p unable is 0 all signals must be stable and valid before clock edge that takes into t2 from t2 onwards it is an unable phase from t2 to t3 it is an unable phase where p unable is also asserted and p ready is equals to 1 as there is no wait state peripheral acknowledges the transfer and data is written in the cycle no wait state is needed here at the end of the t3 the signals p select p unable go low all signals are de asserted bus may return to idle or go to setup for a new transfer this is right transfer with no wait state now right transfer with wait state in right transfer with wait state during access phase when p unable is high the completer extends the transfer by driving p ready as low in write transfer with wait state all signals behave the same as in no wait transfer up to set of phase at t1 during the set of phase p select is 1 p write is 1 a valid p address and p write data are placed on the bus p enable is 0 indicating set of phase at t2 in enable phase p enable is asserted to signal the transfer is now active however unlike no wait transfer p ready signal is not asserted immediately this indicate the peripheral is not ready yet to complete the transfer the bus remains in unable phase while p ready is zero once the peripheral is ready that is at t4 p ready goes high now both p enable and p ready asserted the write transfer occur at t4 after the transfer at t5 all signals p select p enable are de asserted bus returns to the idle state or begin a new transfer so due to the wait introduced by the peripheral this transfer takes more than 2 clock cycles making it right with wait state moving to read transfer read transfer with no wait state in this picture you can see from t0 to t1 all control signals are at their default values this means the system is in idle state at t equals to t1 set of phase begins p select is equals to 1 which means a specific peripheral got selected p address is equals to address 1 so the master is requesting to read data from address 1 p write is equals to 0 indicating this is a read operation 
P unable is equals to zero, it is still in set of phase. At t equals to t two, the protocol enters the unable phase. P unable is equals to one, marking the active phase. P ready is equals to one, which means peripheral is ready to complete the transfer. Since both P unable and P ready are high at the same time, the read transfers complete successfully in this cycle with no wait state. The data is placed on P re P read data line by the peripheral received by the master. After this, the bus returns to the idle or move to the next transfer. So this is the successful read operation with no wait cycle completed just in two clock cycles with read transfer with no wait state. Now coming to read transfer with wait state. So this is very much similar to read transfer with no wait state. From T0 to T1, it is in idle state. At T1, P select is 1, peripheral is selected, P address is equals to address 1, indicates the location from which data need to be read. P write is equals to 0, it means it is a read operation. From T2, P unable is asserted and P ready is 0. It means peripheral is not ready to return the data. So the bus stays in unable phase waiting for P ready to go high. This is called wait phase. At T equals to 4, P ready is equals to 1. It means P ready is high now. So peripheral is ready to return the data. So it is returning data, data 1 to the master. So now read transfer is happening at T equals to T5. The signals P select and P enable and P ready all are deasserted from the system. So far we have discussed both read and write operation for both cases with wait state and without wait state. Now let's move to a special case when error occur during the transfer. In this slide we can see from T0 to T1 the system is in an idle state. At t equals to t1, p write is equals to 1, which indicates that it is a write transfer. p select is 1, which means peripheral is selected. p address is equals to address 1, that is the address to which write, write operation is happening. p write data is equals to data 1, that is the data to be written at address 1. So this is the set of phase. At t equals to t2, P enable is equals to 1, which means bus moves to enable phase now. P ready is equals to 0, means peripheral is not ready to complete the write operation. So we have to wait. At t equals to t3, P ready is high now, peripheral is now ready. But also P slave error is equals to 1, which means peripheral encountered an error during the transfer. So even though the transfer completes, it completes with an error. The data may not be written correctly due to some fault. That fault could be anything like protection error, unsupported address or anything else. So this is the case of write transfer with an error. So this is all for the APB protocol session. I hope this session was helpful and added some value to your understanding. If you found it useful, that truly means a lot. Thank you so much for your time, attention, interest. Have a great day ahead. So this is all for this APB protocol session. I hope this session was helpful. If you find it useful, that truly means a lot. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day ahead.